fan. What do you get when you mix classic sport card collectibles with modern day gaming cards and put it on the blockchain? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. FanZone is building the world's first project that allows you to collect NFT sport cards of your favorite players and use those collectibles to compete in games all while being on a public blockchain. That's cool, man. Not even launched yet, Fanzone is working with Luxo to use universal profiles to take sport NFTs to the next level. That's what I'm talking about! In this interview, I will be talking to the Fanzone creators and see what the future looks like for sport card collectibles. So sit back, relax, and let's learn everything that is Fanzone. Hey everybody, before we get going, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Bjorn and Claudio for doing this interview with me. Um, it was kind of a, a last minute sort of thing. They uh, squeezed me in while they were doing a web summit. So I just want to say I really appreciate them um, for answering my questions. I also wanted to let you guys know about a couple of links down below in the description. I have one that's a reference link to FanZone. Uh, if you end up getting it, just know every single day you log in to FanZone, you can get free FNC. And every single time um, you log in for a week. Uh, I think right now you get fr uh, 50 free FNC, so it's actually a pretty, pretty good deal. Um, so if you want to earn free tokens uh, before they eventually launch on the Luxo network, then uh, then yeah, you can get them down below. Just use that reference link. Also, there's another link to their uh, Twitter link, uh, to their Twitter, and essentially there's a contest they're giving out right now. Um, they're giving out three free packs that have some FNC cards in it. Um, so you can get some free NFT cards, as well as they're giving away um, a Luxo um, token to four people. So um, check out that as well. And then the last thing I want to say before I start this is, uh, I always forget to say this on these, but uh, this channel, everything YouTube gives me goes straight to charity. So every like, subscribe, share, comment, anything like that really does go a long way. And I really appreciate everyone who has, uh, you know, um, subscribed and all that thus far. But uh, yeah, let's get on with the interview. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you later. Well, um, we'll just get this started. I appreciate your uh, yes, your time with uh, with me. Um, no, we saw some of your YouTubes and I really like it. Yeah, super cool to talk to you. Oh yeah, well appreciate. It. Yeah, I mean, um, I kind of I kind of want to talk to any company who's uh, involved with Luxo. You guys are one of the first companies to you know kind of test out their their tech and stuff like that. So you know that's pretty cool. But um, but yeah, I guess uh, um, let's kind of start from the beginning and kind of tell me how you founded FanZone, kind of how it came about and all that. Sure, yeah. If you like, I guess it's, uh, if it's okay, you can also make a screen recording. Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'm recording this as well, so hopefully. Ah. But yeah. Nice, Claudio, your turn. How did FanZone come into Life. Yeah, okay. Oh, there so, we yeah. go. I see it now. Yeah. Yeah, hi. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, at Fernzown, we really try to solve the fan engagement and experience challenge we have today to now. So, right now, actually, fans want to connect much more with their, their favorite stars, teams, leagues, athletes. And they also want to get to know more about them and they want to interact with them. And they also want to participate in their success. And I think this is what we try to solve. Yeah, with fans on as a collectibles NFTs for sports fans and others, you can now connect closer to your favorite stars. If they have success, if they rise, you can also rise with your collections and your collectibles on the blockchain. But you can also interact with them by using those NFTs in games we develop. Yeah, like there's a meta game, but there's also different little games like for example in football the penalty game the fantasy sports which actually we have a big background in and also we want to make people to be able to share their fandom yeah and this is also where luxo and the universal profiles come into play yeah that um that kind of leads up exactly to my next question yeah the the erc 725 um, um kind of opens up a couple you know new doors um what uh i mean i did see that you had some fantasy um you know uh, gameplay that, that you're kind of looking into um outside of uh, uh of that um what what kind of interaction are you trying to uh, build with these teams and these players with like the you know uh, erc 721 the 1155 the 725 all these standards kind of open up a bunch of new doors 
Yeah, totally. So first, NFTs are used to be just standalone. They are super anonymous. Yeah, you, you buy an NFT, you have often a picture of an athlete, but the athlete doesn't even know about it. He's not connected to it. So now as a fan, you collect them on your universal profile, but also for all connected real life entities. And that's the athlete, the team and the league at least. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even maybe like a good cause or a char charity event are really connected. They are part of the so-called creators, um, which you also see in other ERC 725 um, NFTs. Often they are, for example, the designers. So they also have universal profiles. So you really see the connection. It's creating a network, a, a new kind of little internet within, so to say. And that's the first part. Yeah. And then, of course, we want to create even more, not just the digital link, but much more of a physical link as well. For example, we try to to kick off an initiative where athletes and their fans can do something together, often for a good cause. For example, yeah, one project we call the Green Card, where if an athlete runs for a good cause, yeah, there's a lot of cool donation apps which track your your mileage, so to say, you run or do other sports, and fans can do so too. And then you kind of can connect with that person together. Oh wow! Awesome. Yeah, I think this is really cool. That is really yeah. cool. So, sorry, let me just. Uh, so you're saying that uh, if I have a favorite athlete or something like that, and they're like, "Hey, I'm gonna run X amount of miles for this charity, this cause. If you guys all want to run with me, uh, you guys can kind of uh, be able to communicate that way through your guys's application." So currently, as a fan, the only thing you have or the chance you can interact with your favorite athlete. Like on Instagram is only you can like, you can comment. Mm -hmm. That's it. In most of the cases, maybe the athlete doesn't even read the stuff because he has an agency doing all the work. And uh, what we try and bring in is also like a special connection or some money can buy stuff. Like what we did recently with our voice book that fans can win like VIP uh, packages here to go to the games, sign jerseys, maybe, I don't know, sign game balls one day. But in this specific case, what Claudio said is you can really team up for a specific cause and we can even make it like into to an internal battle between the team yeah if we have like one two or three players from one team yeah and so it's team internal battle who i don't know let's say yeah. plants trees and then uh, because we have several partners we also try and convince several partners right now we could also make this a competition between the two teams i don't know who is doing more good until christmas <laughs> or something like that so this is something like on our short list what we try um and implement right now and i mean yeah, the so options fun. are yeah. like unlimited what you can do yeah. in the future but our goal is really to to bring fans and the athletes closer together to do also some yeah. good yeah and so far yeah, i mean Bjorn is a big runner and also big in into the running for active giving which is already like a non-blockchain based uh, solution where basically you have this donation funds where mm -hmm. you can run for often uh, like a close crew but i think bringing this to the athlete is really cool because the athlete has basically the power to 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 have a positive impact if he runs 100 miles in a in a week and his fans add another thousand to it or even more yeah that's a quite good feeling and it's for something good so i yeah. really like that teaming up and you're in a group and you do something together even you don't have to be in the same place or even in the same time zone so yeah that would be a really cool thing as a as a really cool interactivity and this is all possible much better through this uh, universal profiles yeah because you have this connection to it sustainability is just one aspect and yeah. this is what we do right now but for instance i mean just an example but almost every athlete has their own foundation but they want to do good so if we talk to specific athletes they can they could even bring in their foundations that they benefit of um like the money that we raise yeah or the revenue that that's cool so, and transparent on the blockchain like you can yeah. track it this universal profiles again so when you yeah. launch all these nfts you have like you know 1500 cards per player whatever <clears throat> um who actually controls that information because i'm assuming that like if once they're stat in order i mean no no other nft would be able to do like a fantasy football league on the nft because they can't change the information on it like they can on the universal profile right so um yeah i oops sorry yeah yeah so, yeah, so currently Oh, go on. Sorry, my bad. No, you. So yeah, currently we have uh, lots of uh, partnerships and 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 build more partnerships with the IP holders. Sometimes it's athletes themselves. Sometimes it's a whole team, like Wolfsburg. Sometimes it's a whole league, like the German international team, the third league. Um, next year we bring in more sports with whole leagues, 
Um, so these IP holders basically grant us the right to create those NFTs. We then create the, the ecosystem, the tokenomics that there's not too many, not too little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the the chance of rise in the secondary market is good. But on the other side, we are in a mass market for sports fans. So it's not like in art where you just sometimes have the one off. Yeah. In sports, often you have more fans. So it has to be a good economy. We we are calculating for it. And on the other side, of course, it's still a small market. That means in the future, if there's more fans coming to it, the, the first and earliest NFTs will be the most uh, scar, scarce yeah. ones. So, so these players and everything, because I noticed that you, um, they're, um, like you're releasing certain players at certain times and stuff like that. Um, are you, like, because um, you're saying, like, yeah, these players can actually interact with their, with their fans. I guess I'm trying to um, um, envision kind of what that more looks like. So are they able to interact with the application, with the FanZone app, and, and be able to interact with their fans that way as well? Is that what's going on? So first, we are creating these universal profiles, right, mm -hmm. which are connected to the NFTs. So that enables also us to basically verify the athletes. Yeah, As you know, the blue tick on Twitter and all the other social media platforms where actually these athletes if they would like to at some point can just take over their profile they can change the nfts you you bought because basically one important thing is there's lots of information on the nft which is eternal yeah mm -hmm. it's set in stone yeah for example the main media you see the the graphics the title and a lot of other metadata which is set in stone and a few things are actually upgradable this is what we are doing also with our nfts we enable that you can upgrade based on the ERC 725Y standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have real cool key values there. You can store much more data than in on an Ethereum oh, ERC 721 yeah. NFT. So you can allow a few things to to add content. And on the other side, for us, it's important that each NFT can be really unique. And that's why beside a token ID and a score, which is helpful for the games and often relates to the token idea yeah? the the earlier mint numbers the, the smaller numbers are usually more valuable more rare and have more power in the games plus they can upgrade so through your activity and this is also part of this um, new standard we huh. find actually together with Luxo we spend uh, lots of uh, super cool hours discussing this new standard it's called LSP 8 unique digital asset is uh, in the draft if you look into the github um, LSP LIP repository, and it's really cool. Yeah, it, uh, it enables more metadata, more images and videos through the ERC 725Y, but also the, the idea of upgradable, upgradable uh, NFTs, uh, even later than unlockable content, and lots of batch tra uh, transactions because performance is actually a big topic which is only always behind the scenes but super important for us yeah we enable this gas stations where users don't have to have crypto yeah lots of people might join the crypto community but others they don't want that te technical hurdle yeah they so we can pay their transaction fees we can use meta transactions for having lots of little transactions within one big one um yeah huh yeah, that's cool. So the games that you, that you're um, gonna end up be being being um, implemented through FanZone, um, um, the one I know about or that I've kind of heard, I guess, is is the you know um, uh, what do you call it? fantasy? You know, whatever fantasy soccer, baseball, whatever it is, whatever you end up doing. Um, what else? Like, what other? Do you have anything that's uh, like on the horizon? As soon as you know Luxo launches their mainnet, you'll be able to you know launch something outside the out, out the gate. Um, kind of what what are, what are those looking like? Yeah, yeah. So our roadmap for games is quite uh, uh, more like a medium term. So it, it's not within weeks, but rather within months. So the first part we're developing right now is a penalty game, which is just a daily engagement. You through activity you can. Yeah, have the joy to use your NFTs in a very simple game. You select your your either guard or your their kicker, yeah, striker, um, and then there you get a random other partner to play. It's a little fun game. It's it's not too deep. And, and it's only football related, right? Yes, initially that starts with football. 
And then fantasy sports is actually where we have a big background. Our co-founder Dirk, who is also the CEO, he worked in, in games for far more than a decade and uh -huh. spent many years in fantasy sports. Yeah, so that's pretty cool because yeah, it's it's helpful. It's for football. It's for most team sports. It's um, very good comparable for for various things. And then there's a agency game, yeah, or actually let's call it the meta game, which is much more about the gamification of collecting itself and having a career mode where you really upgrade your yourself by collecting, by trading, and and then more throughout the the whole experience, yeah, on the app. And then there is the the next one, but that's a big one and it'll take a while. Is much more of a trading card game. We worked hard on it, but it's it's a tough one. Yeah, we are big fans of uh, Magic: The Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, these yeah. Kind of um, but it, it has to be done right, and it, it's tricky as soon as you think that you have NFTs from different verticals, different sports. Maybe not all team sports. Yeah, um, and then it gets um, tricky to make a, a a game that makes sense. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So you've been you've been testing on Luxo, I assume, then for months, right? So yeah, like um, the the journey with Luxo started very early. I've been in the first standard proposal meetings uh, when uh, Fabia and Marjorie and a few others started those. I think 2019. I was heading the uh, blockchain division at Porsche Digital. It's uh, yeah, I saw that. Debate. And this is where we start technically with our pilot, with the Takoya Porsche former E-Team. That's also where I met Björn. We just started a meetup to show the pilot or to talk to, to uh, fans yeah, of the sport. And that's where Björn walked in as Germany lead for the Formula E, actually. Oh yeah, I saw that, that's cool. So, yeah, basically we just met through a Facebook event that Claudio set up and I was just like, also, what the heck is going on here in Berlin? Someone organizes a meetup for Formula E. Okay, I better check it out. And yeah, this is how we first met. And then afterwards, um, Claudia also got me involved into the whole pilot project. And like a year later already, Fenzo was founded. Yeah, so we were super happy that we could convince Porsche um, that this pilot, yeah, with one racing team, could be then actually scaled much better to having fans from different teams and then also different sports. So they became investor. Uh, it's kind of, yeah, yeah, investor in the same year. And on the other side, from a technical technical perspective, I've been for years on lots of meetups for blockchain, lots of conferences, really from nice ones like the Web3 Summit and to more geeky ones like Zero Knowledge Proof um, tech related start, uh, like conferences and meetings mm -hmm. but actually um, yeah, Lux like, like caught my, my eye uh, pretty much I already really enjoyed the, the vision of um, Marjorie and Fabian on the one side it's really important about what are you doing in which area Yeah, having consumer goods digital and physical items for like a blockchain really for the people for the entertainment for the usage of private people, not just for banking and business or DeFi or anything else. Yeah, you need a lot of performance as well. And on the other side, um, from Fabian's tech vision, so he created the first Web3 browser, Mist. Yeah. He created Web3.js. So he saw that we need this connection between the internet or the World Wide Web, how users see the internet, to the blockchain. Yeah, because it was disconnected. Yeah, if, at least for users. So he always saw what's needed, yeah, ERC-20. It took a long time until everybody doing tokens realized, ah, yeah, this is what we need. So, um, yeah, I believe the universal profiles can create a decentralized network, yeah, um, a little bit different than Meta. And I'm not talking about Metaverse in general, but rather the centralized the networks. Yeah. That's funny, Meta. Yeah, um, I, I just saw a tweet from Jack Dorsey, and he said, uh, "He said uh, apps have distracted me from how powerful the web is." Um, but it is kind of interesting because, uh, yeah, um, the what I mean, I guess on that note as well, um, you know, blockchain, I you know, is gonna. I think like people that have an individual ownership and complete control over their lives, like that's just gonna be more and more of a trend, and blockchain is a you know obvious solution to that. 
Um, I did see notes of like you guys wanted to become like a you know decentralized you know company. I'm not sure if I read that right. Where maybe you'll have a you know uh, I don't I don't know kind of there's a couple different ways I guess you could set that up when it comes to voting or or whatever. Um, what what yeah. does that look like? So actually, I think um, as much as I, I, I dig uh, DAOs and all the the other systems, now we are rather uh, focusing on, on creating a decentralized um, tech solution, blockchain, being participating in this decentralized network. We ourselves, we are really like a, just a typical company. This is based on just how we got funded. Yeah, we are a German-based yeah. based, uh, startup. We got funding by, by Porsche. Um, so yeah, we are just having this regular, how do you call it, company registration, and it's more about building solutions which are fully decentral. And this is one thing where we really work most hard, I guess. And this is how can we make it easy for sports fans to adopt, yeah, to just, for example, start an app, register by email, social media, but on the other side, find a solution which is truly decentral, and that means on a real decentral blockchain, yeah, not just a blockchain which has six or 21 validated nodes, but many more, like where everybody can join the security of decentralization. And on the other side, also use those uh, as fully, sorry for the- No, you're good. Also. Use all of those in a in a real decentral way, which means uh, you, you need to be also able to use it non-custodian. And having both in one system is really difficult. Often people either use Coinbase, the app, mm -hmm. uh, super easy. Everybody of my friends, I can tell them how to do it. Just have to register, do KYC. Yeah, it's easy. But then it's um, you never like it, it's never decentral. It can't. Yeah. And we believe through also again the universal profiles we can now <laughs> create a universal profile. You just register the app. You sign up on the web or in the app. You get your NFTs, and if you're ready to to get into the non-decentral part, yeah, or if you are ready, then you can use those universal profiles. We yeah, have with your own keys, with a plug-in like MetaMask, in the future other hardware wallets, or right now hardware wallets connected through MetaMask. So you have both in one place, and I don't see any other possible solution to really do this. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, um, I recently saw a tweet of Fabian. Um, someone commented about uh, MetaMask and being able to integrate things easier and make it. And uh, and he's like, I can't remember what he tweeted, but he's like, yep, something's on the way. The Universal Profiles. It's kind of funny. Yes. Um, but yeah. Uh, well, yeah, um, yeah, I believe Luxo is making it really easy. I think last time I looked, it was like a thousand bucks to create a node, which isn't that much. Um, on, on the on the test net, I believe is is what they were sixteen or thirty two. I can't remember what it was actually now, but uh, yeah, like how much uh, looks you need to run a validator stay uh, on a node. Yeah, let's see about that. But the most important part is like how many can there be? Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's a big number which I see as that's a good decentral network. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, well, I guess let's. Uh, um, kind of talk about, I, I know this is on your Discord, and I guess I could just repeat it or, or as well, but I, um, but a lot of people ask about, uh, um, I know obviously we're, you're not doing anything with your tokens because you have to wait until Luxo launches, and then I understand it's probably going to take a while to like, you know, figure things out after it launched and stuff like that, but um, you, you mentioned on your Discord, they're like, well, we'd like to keep our token, but it might be issues when it comes to regulators and stuff like that, um, so kind of what are your thoughts around that? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's a it's, it's a tricky one because of the, all of this regulation. So right now in the in our mobile app and the website, people can buy yeah, the athletes' cards, and they can also sell them on a secondary market. Right now, the the currency, the number you you ask for, is depends on credits, which is a centralized mm -hmm. yeah, credit system. As this is what we needed, because currently most of the users they don't have cryptocurrencies, they don't have a wallet, um, and well, as long as we are not on mainnet, it doesn't really make sense to decentralize that part. For sure, as, For sure. as, as the security is not uh, long long term. So yes, we believe it makes super sense, yeah, to have this. Also, as we we want to give activity like 
for users. Yeah, we want to reward activity. We also want to build this ecosystem, which goes beyond the little games we build, but let other people benefit from that as well. And with this, of course, uh, token makes sense. But regulation is a tough one. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of legal process. It's it's not just uh, having an LSP7, which is the basically the Luxor version of the ESC20, yeah, so to say, um, which will be the next version of all the Luxor um, yeah, current assets, I guess. Yeah, so it's it's more than the tech. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, cool. Um, and um, yeah, I guess uh, w let's, um, let's talk about your, I almost forgot to ask this earlier, um, but uh, sports, everyone wants to know, like, Kind of what teams are on the horizon? Uh, new sports. Uh, um, kind of what's um, what's that looking like? Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, we we didn't go too much into detail, but um, so we have the first basketball team coming. Oh, cool. Yeah. So this is a start. Yeah. Uh, you saw that we we already have a handball team uh, on our platform. So I mean. Currently, it's all still the, the beginning stages. Yeah? So, um, like the first big league that's coming up next, at least like in our perspective, is Dritte Liga. It is only Germans like third division. Yeah? You have uh, in, in soccer and in football, you have the Bundesliga, you have the second Liga, and then comes Dritte Liga. And um, like in, in the case for Germany, Sorare has the rights for the first and the second league, and we have the Dritte Liga for now. But I think it's also like good to start with Dritte Liga. Yeah, because also you want to build your product up. You, it would be a bit crazy to go for for the Champions League right yeah. away. Yeah, and and then you run into all sorts of problems. For so sure. Let's figure out our problem, uh, our problem, our product first. Yeah, and, and start with Dritte Liga, get it right, and then of course we can scale it. Uh, also go into like other sports or bigger leagues. But um, like from that perspective, I really like that we have Dritte Liga coming first. Maybe you never heard of those teams before. <laughs> Here, yeah, there are like big names, at least for Germany, traditional teams that, that people know. And this gives us the right playground to start with and build, build from there. Yeah, several things are not announced yet. That's why he's uh, so shy. So we have a whole new league in a different sports than football uh, coming and, and signed. Uh, and then there's um, beside yeah, football, handball and basketball. We have quite lots of active talks to, to other areas. Esports and motor sports is super cool for us, yeah. As a, as topics. I'm yeah. about to ask that next. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, super cool areas where, you have, uh, yeah, lots of young fans, lots of people which are also early adopters interested. Um, I think an advantage for us is we can, like, foster like different verticals, with sport, but also different. Um, group sizes so we start with individual athletes yeah mm -hmm. we started with Oscar Schmidt we have several other like world champions uh, under the contract already so we have individuals yeah we have teams but also the whole league yeah I think this is a quite cool thing and it perfectly fits also with the universal profiles if you think that they are all real life entities why shouldn't be they also be entities on the decentral pages and especially being here in Lisbon right now is really cool because Web Summit starts uh, from Monday tomorrow, less until Thursday. Because we're not just here to, to talk to potential investors for our Series A. There are also plenty of like uh, top-notch athletes coming here as speakers because they also have a an own like sports uh, segment at the Web Summit. So, uh, for instance, I don't know if you heard of Patrick Muratoglu. He's the he's the coach of Serena Williams and uh, okay. Stefan Sitsipa. Djokovic, yeah, and calibers like that are here. Or there's one yeah. co-owner of the Atlanta WNBA team um, coming here. Also, a driver from for, uh, from Extreme E, this electric racing or rally series. So this also offers hopefully plenty of new opportunities for us being here. Now, and some of our talks with partner potential partners go on since months, and actually more than months, like. One is going already on since a year. Oh, yeah. Let's see. I think uh, chances are good. Um, so the thing is, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to reach this international yeah. sport area very soon, right? Like we started it with Germany because, well, that's where 
It was easier. Yeah, where we could easier approach where we have existing connections. Yes. Yeah. But, but of course, the US market is super difficult. First of all, money wise, yeah, you have Depper Labs that, that are spending hundreds of millions for NBA, NFL rights, and so on. And also coming in as a European company is pretty difficult. But um, I mean, we have a global product from the beginning. Yeah. So let's see when we have a big our first big uh, like name from the US market on FanZone. Yeah, or possibly uh, it might be also that's cool. uh, Indian, which is also both pretty cool uh, areas. Yeah, um, yeah, that's cool. So you are expanding outside of uh, into the United States, and um, yeah, esports is kind of interesting. I remember back in you know when twenty twenty started, uh, um, they had to cancel a basketball game, so instead they had a bunch of esport people play and more people watch that and so it's like more people want to watch other people play sports than the people who are actually the real human beings <laughs> you know, it's like i want to see a kid watch it play play a version of of a superstar instead of actually watch the superstar so yeah i think uh i i think friend zone is or sorry um friend zone <laughs> i think fan zone <laughs> i know yeah. right is um is uh doing some really cool things that i you know, if people ask me like, "Well, what about?" I, I'm not a big fan of the tradables. Okay, half a billion dollars for a picture um, or, or whatever. You know, that people the crazy stuff. But uh, being able for artists now to be able to um, build brands for themselves easier and stuff like that, as well as you know, sports. I often wonder about all the little guys. It's like great, all the big guys get paid a bunch of money. They get a bunch of attention. They dominate. You know, and now the little guys, the ones who are just trying to get into it, they could end up doing a lot better if they were able to b build their brand earlier and see p and have p more eyes on them earlier on. And and uh, yeah, so I think I think a lot of people, you know, um, a lot of the Luxo crowd are fans of um, fan zone because of that. So um, yeah, so too. So the thing is, um, but I believe, yeah, getting closer to what you're really fan of. Yeah, sometimes it's not only the league. Sometimes it's really, I mean the the athlete, the stars themselves, and having a closer connection and let them benefit in music. I mean, most everyone is uh, is with the opinion that little musicians have it really hard, while big labels uh, are quite taking a big share. And getting closer to the real athletes is really nice. And for us, I mean, each NFT is already connected to the, the right person. So I think this helps a lot. We have some background noise again. There you and now... Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I saw one video, which was quite a long time ago from you, where you said, hey, maybe Steam It will be really cool and coming. Yeah, I know, it's a, it's a while ago. I guess it was before the I, last yeah. uh, dark and ice age of crypto. I believe so too, because I was looking into how can blockchain and most likely the tech, not just any cryptocurrencies <laughs> and prices going up and down, how can they have a real impact on the real life and the real world? Yeah, and I believe, um, well, Steemit didn't take off as many hoped. Yeah, we are still on, on medium, I guess, uh, a yeah. lot. But I believe the idea of decentralized profiles and a decentralized network and lots of fans. I mean, sports is huge. Yeah, you have like uh, super many people are just sports fans of one of the other or the other. Um, yeah, can maybe the, make this stand. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, um, yeah, I appreciate you guys meeting with me, talking to me for a little bit. Um, yeah, we're we're big fans. Can't wait until you know mainnet happens with Luxo, and you guys, uh, you know, um, I'm sure lots of people are going to be piling on to Luxo, right? But uh, it's kind of cool to talk about. There's only a few of you guys that started uh, testing with them on the, you know, before they end up launching. So that's really cool. Um, I guess is there anything else you'd like to say before we end the Cool. Well, I mean, when do you publish this uh, this interview? Uh, I was going to publish it tomorrow. Awesome, perfect timing. Because so we are here in Lisbon until Thursday, and we have a little like giveaway on our Twitter. We have a Twitter campaign connected to the Web Summit, where users can win an NFT pack plus Luxy as well. So we have four lucky yeah. winners that will get a fan zone pack plus uh, one Luxy uh, Luxy each. Okay, it's not so much but better than nothing and especially maybe it helps also to attract new users to to Luxor and Luxi while we're here and it would definitely help if like you guys participate uh Skylar feel free to share this as well if you haven't done so already 
And um, yeah, let's let's see how all of this will help us grow Luxo oh, and cool. Fanzone. Yeah. yeah, I saw the tweet. Um, in fact, I was looking at it. I think there was like 54 people that shared it. And I was like, hmm, they're giving away like four or five things. There's only like 50 people. Like, this is a pretty good chance to actually have people win. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I'll definitely we'll post about it, and um, I'll, I'll post this video Monday morning. And um, yeah, appreciate you guys. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. For and for the techies, check out LSP8 unique digital assets in the draft repository of Luxy. Luxo. Yeah. I actually LSP. wrote I actually wrote that down myself. So <laughs> awesome. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>